populations who live perfectly well together for years and decades all of a sudden start really to hate each other to the point of no return and the warlords are in business. It's as simple as that. Bosnia, Croatia, Serbia, Kosovo, now soon the Shiites, uh, Sunnis, uh, Kurds, uh, in all over Africa. And it, that, that's, that's the way I started the 30 years war in Europe. And that was exactly it, the collapse of the state and then warlords take over. And that's why we need philosophers who tell us about the Republic and the division of power and the necessity of the monopoly of violence within the state. No, you don't agree? No. Okay. Don't agree with you're, you've got the floor. <laughs> but, but your point is in, do it, they do it for the media. The counter argument would be now in, in Sudan, where the uh, people, the victims, are crying for the media to come in and, oh, okay. and bring it out. So it is, it is both sides, the victims oh, and the victim everybody both is using, the media. Everybody is using the media. They are not using, maybe also needing, that is yeah. the point. Would we uh, suggest that we want to shut it down? No way. There is no. But you, you see now, you said Bruno Ganz is no Rocco, he certainly ain't. Uh, uh, yeah, he's Golimowski much more so. But like he was not supposed to be because he is the journalist who becomes aware of the dilemma that the job he is really doing is not to stop the violence by making people aware of the violence, but by, in a sense, helping them to perpetrate it and to continue it. And, and that's why he wants to get out of it. Sonia? Yes, I, I think that I would like that you talk a little bit about the victimization of that. And, um, and I think that if one can speak about obscene, and I think that it's a difference between capturing notions of obscene and the obscenity of war. I wouldn't, and I think use, that, uh, I wouldn't yeah. use the word, Father. <laughs> yeah, but I think that you know, he, was film, making, yeah. he was making reference to and I think that it's, it's a completely different uh, notion of what is going on in war that is you know, talking about uh, the state in terms of politics and the, the ideological implications that have religions and then that have also the media and the way that you want to portray and uh, the different levels that uh, uh, ideology play a role and what people believe in uh, the participation of war. So I think that we're talking about two different elements here in terms of... Sonia, this is a typical example of how do you, how you get misquoted. Oh. I never I, said, I only said, I couldn't see any obscenity yesterday in, in the movie. There's no obscenity in Catherine's movie, in my view, okay? But this, what he portrays, that I would call the real, the authentic obscenity of humanity. Well, I'd, I'd go one other. step further. Maybe I was uh, perpetrating obscenity by staging the war as a big opera. You know, and we, when we uh, went there, the question we were facing was, do we do this handhold camera <coughs> reportage style, the Battle of Algiers? Or do we do it just the opposite, crane shots, you know, long tracking shots, and bring out the strangely operatic side of the war? And uh, since I had seen so many reportage stuff being I mean, done in the kind of fake, shaky handhold, you know, to make it look all like it was real, uh, I, and to this day, I don't know whether it was right or wrong, I decided to stage it as big opera. And that may have been obscene. <laughs> it's a topic of war, but let's go away from the obscene. You know, I mean, war has been painted for ever since, since the Renaissance, there are paintings, and, and you have the Otto Dix paintings on the one hand, or, uh, you know, even going into the abstract for the year what. Or you have the, these Schinken, you know, the, the war paintings where, you know, you, you can enjoy the battle scene. And I'm, I'm, to this day, I'm not quite sure, uh, you know, whether, whether we were right or wrong to do it this way. Yes, I have a comment that kind of leads into a question. It sort of dovetails with what you were talking about. Um, I think the film, because of that operatic, um, you know, said is, is formally really interesting and 
and beautiful um, in a kind of crushing way. Uh, but you know, the last twenty years it makes me think about how much um, representation of and presentation of war has changed. Um, you know, I grew up uh, watching the imagery of the Gulf War, these kind of really beautiful Dago sequences of they you know, proved the, the visuals. Yeah, the people <laughs> night bombing. And you know, and, and following that, Spielberg sitting in front of Ryan, kind of you know, extremely shaky, can't tell it. It puts the blood up in your face. Um, and I think because of these things, the film does not look to me to be obscene at all today. Um, you know, obscenity today is like out of the grave. And it's, you know, that's sort of an entirely new concept. This idea that you know, the prisoners themselves, or the you know, soldiers themselves, have digital cameras. They're taking shots, you know, while that happening from their perspective, and sending out the images instantly, you know, through email, email or whatever. Um, but because of that, it's, it kind of seems like um, this film, if it were you know, about a rap today, it could not be the same thing, because you know our eyeballs have changed, our needs have changed. And yeah, well, the see. aesthetics will change. Yeah. I mean, you would hopefully make a different picture from what I did <laughs> uh, years ago. But, but, sort of but I, I, I think the war and the dilemma of the journalists is, uh, is even more what it was here now. I mean, it just doesn't have any of the Hemingway, you know, uh, fiesta in another country, you know, this romantic... Uh, he tries to live the romantic thing with the love affair on the side while being there and death is around and she is not interested in that. She wants to adopt the baby and she couldn't care less, you know, about all that and she doesn't have that romantic idea at all. Hello. Yeah. I think you've made an extraordinary film, so unforgettable film. I have a quick question for you. What do you suggest the main character should have done or could have done differently? And you personally. You know, once the picture is Marvel done, it's finished, I, I prefer not to think about it anymore. No, but I'm asking you. Uh, uh, but there, uh, I, I agree uh, for myself, there is an unresolved conflict. There's, I had a conflict with Bruno Ganz, and invariably, when you have a conflict with an actor, it's not between you and the actor that something is wrong with the part. And, uh, and that's what your question well, seems to point are... to. It, it, uh, it is uh, uh, the, the way the part is written there is, I mean, I know the or origin, it's, it's not relevant now to tell it, but like there, there, there is an inherent flaw in the, in the character. I don't know what, what exactly, what else I should say. I, 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 see, if I had made Jerzy Skolimowski the photographer, the main character of the movie would, wouldn't have a problem. <laughs> he's clear cut, you know, we know what he wants, we know what he doesn't want, you know, he's just cynical enough to go through it and at the same time uh, an engaging character and, and things would be very clear. Um, but I think you had something else in mind. Yeah, it was the notion that you say that, that, that the media are part of the creation of this and then, then how therefore can they be part of the uncreation? This. Yeah, because if you say the creator, there must therefore be. Well, at the end, it would be the, the refusal to report on wars. But, but that would be that would be obscene. That would be <laughs> not necessarily. It's not been tried. 